Today on the show, the Seahawks staged a waiver wire coup of sorts yesterday, picking up a young player who could project to be a starting linebacker for them long term. I'll tell you more about Drake Thomas, let you get to know him and get you some scouting insight on him as well. And how about that Seahawks practice squad? It is finalized, as finalized as a practice squad can be. 16 names, fill it out. What do I like? what's missing, and what changes might still be afoot for the Seahawks over the next 10 days. Hit that like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is Seahawks Forever. Welcome to the Seahawks Forever podcast. In-depth analysis on everything Seahawks. And now, here's your host, Dan Viennes. I also want to remind you again about the Pro Sports Fan app. PSF. It's available in iTunes on the Apple Store right now. Should be available by opening day on Android. Should be any day now. Uh, what it is, it's an interactive experience for uh, media casters, hosts like myself, and you, the fan. Uh, there is a Seahawks fan chat room in the app right now. Sign up, become a member of that. We will live stream from there um, during games. That's the biggest part of this experience that they want to drive. And this is all run by... Um, President of the company, Sean Salisbury, former ESPN uh, host and now radio host, former one-time Seahawk undrafted free agent uh, quarterback. And the vision Sean has is interactive game day live streams during the games. Uh, Myself and former field goals co-host Dana O'Gorman will be one of the teams. We'll be with you on opening day against the Rams. And uh, we'll be reacting to the game together live, analyzing it, bitching about stuff, complaining, predicting. And uh, what's cool about it is you can chat in the chat room live throughout the whole experience, but we can also invite you in on video. Sort of, you know, think Manning cast. We'll also do a a midweek show on Wednesday mornings. Uh, We did one yesterday, a little dry run. A few of you popped in and uh, I'm really excited about it. I think it's cool. It's a cool toy and it's kind of the future. So check that out. Uh, I will put a link in the description uh, for that as well. And uh, if you follow me on Twitter at Seahawks Forever, you'll get updates and scheduled live streams, things of that nature. Uh, a couple of news and notes before we get into this today. Um, mostly good news out of Renton in regards to injuries. You know, the biggest question mark going into Wednesday after the deadline Tuesday to cut the roster down was, okay, now the 53-man roster is set. We talked about that on the initial roster show a couple of days ago. But then the next day, players clear waivers, and, and you can then move players from the 53-man roster to injured reserve and be able to designate them to return after four games. And there are a handful of players on the Seahawks that, that – They've been evasive about the severity of their injuries. We don't know where it stands, and so we thought we might see some moves. The fact we didn't can only be good news. A couple of things. We saw Jackson Smith and Jigba out there at practice yesterday running full speed and catching the football with a wrap on his wrist. That can only be good news. Um, No real hard updates on Cody Thompson or Dariq Young. It was thought that Young might have to have hip surgery. The fact they haven't been placed on IR yet has to be good news. Still could happen, could happen next week. In which case you would dip into the practice squad. And I am going to get into that as well after we talk about Drake Thomas. So Thompson Young still not practicing, I don't think. Reporters are limited now in what they can see and what they can tell us from practice yesterday, but still not IR. And then on the defensive side, still a little bit of mystery concerning Mike Morris and the severity of his injury. Pete did say they hope to have him back next week. And then Derek Hall's the other one that came out of that Green Bay game, the last preseason game with a little bit of a shoulder thing. Don't know how severe that is. And we'll talk a little bit more extensively about what they could do there, possibilities there, when we talk about the practice squad. But the best news yesterday was Cam Young, the fourth-round draft pick out of Mississippi State, the nose tackle, back on the practice field yesterday. That's good news. Pete said he looked great. He was playing hard. He was moving really well. It was a calf thing that he had, and they just wanted to take care of that. Knowing that Cam Young is healthy, 
and will be part of that rotation. And, and Carroll reiterated yesterday, he's going to be a big part of that rotation behind Jaron Reed at nose tackle and Miles Adams in some, in some looks. Uh, it's good news. Really good news. And, and explains why they didn't go hunting on the waiver wire uh, for interior defensive linemen nose tackles, although Matt Gotell did make the practice squad. Uh, but I think the biggest thing to come out of yesterday were a couple of moves the Seahawks made on the waiver wire. And I thought they were shrewd. I thought they were, they were, um, forward thinking aggressive, you know, not a lot of players get claimed last year. It was basically one per team. It was 35, 36 players. I don't have the final count for how many were, were claimed this year, but it doesn't happen very often. I glanced at a list yesterday and it, it was probably about that same number. And what the Seahawks did yesterday is they picked up a corner and an inside linebacker. And two guys that that fit what they need, what they what they look for as far as physical thresholds, at least on the on the outside. Q Blue Kelly out of Stanford, fifth round pick this year out of the Ravens, six foot, 195 pounds. Uh, not the fastest guy in the world, clocked uh four, five, five, I think, just under four six. Uh, but showed signs at Stanford as a playmaker, guy with good ball skills, aggressive, looks like a Seahawk corner, right? A guy that can really stand out on special teams early in his career too. And so you just took that that last spot on the roster, that sixth spot on the roster, which was going to be already Burns. And instead of a 28-year-old journeyman, you've now added in a rookie in that sixth spot, a guy with some upside that could play for you down the road. Because Mike Jackson also, regardless of what you think about his performance this preseason, we'll find out against the Rams if he's the starter at left cornerback or not. I suspect it's going to be Trey Brown. Uh, but he's on a one-year deal, a restricted free agent deal. So I thought that was a really cool move. But then Drake Thomas. Drake Thomas is a guy, um, North Carolina State. Let me put his bio up here on the screen if you're watching on, on YouTube. Um, North Carolina State, highly, highly, highly productive player. Played in 47 games. Uh, was a full-time starter his last two years at NC State. First team all ACC. 5'11", 228 is what uh, I had him listed here on NFL.com. But I saw him yesterday listed uh, from the Raiders side of things. Uh, reporters there were saying more like 233, 235. Uh, here are some things that Chad Reuter said about him, some of his strengths on the official NFL.com scouting report. Team captain. We know how Seahawks love leaders and team captains who plays with consistent toughness, always rallies to the football, impressive feel for short area angles to the ball carrier, strong base allows for plus balance through contact, recognition to switch from route to route as a zone defender, closes the distance, and drives through the tackle target. I said he was productive. 293 tackles in 47 games in college, 46 tackles for loss, 19 sacks, 13 passes, defensed four interceptions. He took one of those back for a touchdown. Why didn't he get drafted? That first number there, 5'11". Also, his arm length. He has sub-30-inch arms. And if I were to show you the, the bullet points from Chad on NFL.com about his weaknesses, or you look at Dame Brugler's scouting report or other scouting reports out there, the concerns are lack of elite speed and that arm length. Can he get off blocks? Can he shed blocks? Um, same reason Ivan Pace, another really productive linebacker out of Cincinnati, didn't get drafted. Height. And then what did these two guys do? They both went out and had dominant preseasons for their respective teams. Pace made the Vikings roster. And Thomas almost did. He, classic case of a player that the Raiders really wanted to keep. Because he went out this preseason and erased a lot of doubts about those shortcomings. He was the Raiders' best linebacker in the preseason. 28 tackles. Led them in tackles in the preseason. And did it in a way that really stood out, especially against the run. Physical. And, and this is what I liked when, when I was going through the draft season. Many of you followed me through that, and you know how many mock drafts I do. 
it was a light linebacker class. And there were a couple of guys I liked in the second, third round. Uh, Dan Henley is one. Drew Sanders, guys like that. But once you got past those guys, there was a real drop-off. And so in looking for late-round value, Drake Thomas was a guy that, that came onto my radar because the Seahawks had him in for a 30 visit. I wasn't familiar with him before then. So I watched some tape. And I thought, why, why is this guy being talked about as an undrafted free agent or a seventh rounder? Looks like a thumper at middle linebacker. Keep in mind that linebacker room right now, Bobby Wagner, one-year deal, says that's how he's going to manage the rest of his career. He's going to go year to year. Devin Bush, one-year free agent deal. Jordan Brooks, the last year of his rookie contract, because the Seahawks did not pick up his fifth-year option. And so you need some future projection there. Drake Thomas is a guy that's it's really exciting, as well as Patrick O'Connell, the undrafted free agent out of Montana, played in the preseason and made it to the practice squad. And, and I like everything about that guy for some of the same reasons. You see the instinctiveness on tape, the first step. So important as an inside linebacker. Reading the play, where am I going? And then once you get into the mix, how do I deal with blockers? Now, you know that I don't break down tape. It's not my forte. It's not my strength. I could do it. I watch tape and I think to myself and I take notes sometimes, especially during draft season. I see this, I see that, but I never coached. I didn't play the game at a high level. I rely on others for that. I'm a journalist. I, I interview those guys and pick their brains, right? That's why we have some of those guys on this show, Maddie Brown and Griffin Sturgeon and Sanjit T from the football scout, Corbin Smith. And so I reached out to Sanjit because and I know that you guys like him because every time he's on the show, uh, the videos perform really well. But Sanji covers the entire league, breaks down film around the entire league, but he's a Raiders fan. And his first YouTube channel was just Raiders-based until he started to get some traction around the league. And so I reached out to him. Uh, he wasn't available to hop on the show with me today, but I did get a scouting report from him. Um, he, actually, he actually texted me right after the waiver claim was made and said, oh man, you guys are going to love Drake Thomas. So I asked him for more and this is what he said. I think Drake Thomas is a downhill linebacker who has the potential to develop into a starting caliber linebacker. He's fluid in his movement, has really good mental processing, and you can tell he really understands how to read through the offensive lineman, which allows him to defend the run really well. And again, that's Sanjit T. And he did a full, like an immediate film breakdown on Drake Thomas after the news broke. I will link that video in the description for you as well. Uh, and the thing that you'll see when you watch this video, it's pretty short. He gets right to the point. Um, is that oh, he likes what he sees in coverage too. Very smart player. He can see what's happening in front of him. You have to think, when you see moves like this, first of all, let's get back to Kelly. Fifth-round draft pick of the Ravens. And for the Seahawks, to claim him like they did, even though they have a deep cornerback room, tells me that he was probably under consideration in that fifth, sixth-round range for them. Probably was high on their draft board. And so that work was done. You know, they don't go through this waiver wire list and go, hmm, let's look into that guy. They already, they have their evaluations, right? Same thing with Drake, Drake Thomas. It's probably a guy that they had rated at a certain point on their draft board. It'd be fascinating now to, to, you know, get a little truth serum in John Schneider and say, hey, was he under consideration maybe in the seventh round when you took Kenny McIntosh? You didn't draft an inside linebacker. Was he a guy you were thinking about? Uh, you know, to take a guy like that, it, it essentially now their draft class with the other two undrafted free agents that made the initial roster. They drafted 10, and there's four others, there's 14 rookies. Corbin Smith tweeted this out yesterday. 
45% of the Seahawks roster right now is rookies or second-year players. Considering how good we feel about most of the roster, we've talked about it ad nauseum. We're going to continue to talk about it. We haven't even seen some of the guys yet because they've been nicked up. And the fact that they're being talked about as a contender, that this is a roster ready to win today, but is also that young, it's crazy. Crazy. Let's look at this practice squad now that's been finalized. I like the mix here. So if you're listening on audio, uh, quarterback Holt Nailers, Focused on him on a couple of different episodes over the last month. Go back and check those out. Uh, outside linebacker, edge, but also can play interior a little bit. Levi Bell, one of the stars of the preseason. Lance Boykin, corner. Artie Burns, after being released, made the initial 53. Perfect example of a guy. And then in the waiver claims yesterday, he and John Radigan both had made the initial 53. And then when Thomas and Blue were claimed, those two were released, but made it as vested veterans. Didn't have to go through. Actually, I'm sorry. Radigan did have to go through the waiver process. Once he cleared, he signed back to the practice squad. Burns signed to the practice squad immediately. Offensive tackle Greg Island. Uh, nose tackle Matt Gotell. Talked about him. Joey Hunt back with the team again. Then the receivers, Kay Johnson, Matt Landers, Aesop Winston Jr., who a lot of people expected and wanted to make the 53 couple of running backs, Roderick Thompson, who led the team in rushing during the preseason, and Bryant Kobach. That was good to see. They had released him after the Minnesota game because he got hurt, but he really showed something in that game. And um, uh, good to have some running back depth there, too, especially because we don't know. Talk about another guy with injury questions. We don't know about Kenny McIntosh. He's not practicing yet. So one of these two guys could be elevated on game day if McIntosh isn't ready to go against the Rams. Tyler Mabry back for another tour. And then O'Connell, Ty Okada. Uh, undrafted safety out of Montana State. And we talked about Winston and Radigan. I like the mix here. And these this is these are the guys. Pete Carroll talked about it before cuts. He said, look, we view the roster as being 69 players deep, the 53 plus the 16, because these are guys we can elevate on game day. These are guys we feel like can play. And we hope that we get all our guys back. Not one player signed from outside the organization of the practice squad. So that continuity is there. I like that they kept Ehlers. I thought for a moment when Matt Corral was released by the Carolina Panthers, I thought the Seahawks might try to acquire him for their practice squad, their third quarterback. There are reports they really liked him when he was coming out of Ole Miss. And um, a lot of people think he can be a starter in this league. Carolina, of course, takes Bryce Young one overall. They have um, Andy Dalton backing him up, so they let him go. But within an hour after that news broke, they brought Ehlers back. Let's see if they can develop him because their track record developing quarterbacks in the practice squad is not great. Uh, Bell had such a great preseason. That was exciting. A guy that can really give you some pass rush juice, especially if Derek Hall is out. And we haven't even talked about Daryl Taylor. He hasn't practiced all preseason with that shoulder. Again, the fact they haven't IR'd him yet must mean to me that they think he'll be back before the bye week. But if that should change in the next week, they place him on IR, Bell would be a guy that would be a candidate to come up and play. Matthew Gotell gives you that depth at nose tackle, 341 pounds. He's unlike anything else they have on the roster, really really showed the ability to take on blocks and penetrate a little bit and get down the line and move well for a big guy. Hunt just gives you that veteran presence at center. Greg Island. It's interesting to me that those two are the only offensive linemen on the practice squad. They feel good about their depth, though. Uh, Island listed as a tackle is interesting because he played he played guard in the preseason. So now, now we know he has that kind of versatility. And then once we find out about Cody Thompson and Dariq Young, Aesop Winston could be elevated on game day against the Rams and be in that mix. He looked so good this preseason. Catches the ball well in traffic. Can play the slot or outside. Uh, really like what he did this preseason. And Matt Landers, talk about a developmental process, or prospect, right? 6'4", four, four, speed. Had the touchdown from Ehlers. Uh, needs a little work on route running. Good hands. Um, I like seeing him back on the practice squad. 
as well. Uh, again, the only thing really missing for me is I'd like to see another defensive lineman. I was surprised that Jacob Sykes wasn't brought back to be on this list because if Mike Morris should have to be ir they need another guy on game day that can play that 3-4 defensive end, and Sykes had a good preseason. Um, I'm sure they told him, look, stay in shape. <laughs> we might see you again in a week. I would think he'd be the first place that they turn if you see news that Mike Morris lands on IR next week or even before then, uh, I would imagine Jacob Sykes would then almost immediately be signed, at least to the practice squad, if not the 53 at that point. So that is that. Um, unless there's breaking news, any big moves or injury news this weekend, I might take a couple of days, take a breather before we get into the regular season uh, next week. Uh, next week, we're going to do a Rams preview with Jake Ellenborgen, who writes in podcasts about them. Uh, you may have seen him on my Twitter feed. Uh, so we'll get a good look at the Rams. Also going to have Seaside Joe back on the show next week. Uh, he wrote a, a really intriguing piece recently, sort of what I touched on about all the youth on the roster, but more specifically, the turnover from two years ago. It's shocking. Like to rebuild on the fly like they did while still winning. It's pretty remarkable. We're going to get into some thoughts about that. So look for those shows coming up as well. Follow me on Twitter at Seahawks Forever for all the updates. Download that PSF app. Man, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's free and will be at least for the first couple months of the season. Once it does become subscriber-based, it's going to be very, very inexpensive. Um, listen to the podcast on Spotify, Apple, anywhere you get your audio podcasts. Um, if you don't like the ads on the audio podcast, you can subscribe through Spotify for ad free episodes for 99 cents a month. That link should be on Spotify or reach out to me and DM me if you want that. Uh, until next time, I am, Dan, I am Dan Viennes. Thank you for watching the show and supporting it. Um, forever and always. Go Hawks.